Gaming Commissioner Steve Crosby has been at the center of some tough <clears throat> reporting by the Boston Globe, but inside the Globe, there may be some disagreement whether Crosby is getting a fair shake. Adam Riley has more. It's here on this bleak piece of land in Everett that gambling mogul Steve Wynn wants to build a new casino. The land just happens to be co-owned by a friend of State Gaming Commission Chairman Steve Crosby. And if Wynn's plan goes through, Crosby's friend could make a bundle. The Boston Globe says Crosby should have disclosed that relationship sooner, raising doubts about his judgment. But Crosby disagrees. Every word I utter will be in public about this evaluation, and I think a fair and reasonable person will conclude that I can be objective about this. For one thing, Crosby told the State Ethics Commission about the relationship in August and again in October, and they gave him the green light. And they wrote back and said, given this, you should now reassume your role of chair. If Crosby thinks he's getting a raw deal from the Globe's reporters, he may not be alone. In what felt like a rebuke, the Globe's editorial page praised Crosby's caution and commitment to high standards. But any respite was short-lived. Fighting back, Caesars suing the head of the State Gaming Commission. Caesars had been part of a competing casino proposal for Suffolk Downs, but dropped out after state investigators raised concerns about the company's suitability. Now, Caesars claims Crosby's bias did them in. Crosby says he can handle the public pressure. You can't be in this business if you're not prepared to go through this. But if the negative coverage continues, that may change. Adam, what's your take on this? If he becomes, if he continues to be, let's say, at the center of the story, him personally, his association with one of the co-owners of this parcel of land, can he survive this? I think at a bare minimum, we're probably going to see him decide to recuse himself from all the proceedings involving the one Eastern Massachusetts casino license. But, I mean, a really, really tough week and a half for him, mm -hmm. right? You know, the Globe stories, two stories on page one above the fold, and then a lawsuit that cites the Globe's reportage. Uh, and like you, I don't think we've seen the last of these pieces. I'm actually... A little torn on whether or not Crosby did get a fair shake from, from the Globe's reporters. I mean, I happen to think that this relationship he has is potentially problematic and that it is reasonable for the Globe to shine a light on it um, and that he didn't do himself any favors by waiting as long as he did to make it public. Um, now, you can, I think, argue legitimately about whether they deserved yeah. A1 top of the full yes. placement. But I, I the think there is a... was very, very nasty, the, and it was gleeful. It was almost like, gotcha, gotcha. I don't know if I'd say it was gleeful, but I think it, I the tone, it. and it <laughs> intensified in the second piece, yeah. uh, and I, I expect we're going to yeah. see more. Well, you know, it's and first of all, since we're talking about disclosure, I will disclose that I'm very anti-casino. So on a certain <laughs> level, I'm kind of loving this. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Crosby has a reputation for integrity, and he's earned that over a long period of time. Uh, but it may very well be the fact that he is a person of integrity that is kind of blinding him mm -hmm. to the problem that he's gotten himself into here. Now, Greg Sullivan, the former inspector general, uh, made a very interesting observation that uh, Crosby would appear to be in compliance with state ethics rules, but not in compliance with these much tougher guidelines that the uh, Gambling Commission itself adopted. So I think he's got a real problem here. And what do you think of the editorial, though, to basically criticizing their own coverage? You're right, absolutely. And uh, and uh, I. I I think that the editorial page of the Globe has been pro-casino for a long time, and they don't like to see anything getting in the way of that. But now we see lawsuits coming up. I think that there's a real problem here, and I think there's a chance of this kind of descending into chaos over something that on the face of it may not seem like that big a deal, but mm -hmm. it's enough of a big deal. Well, you know, the thing is, uh, the Wall Street Journal, all the time, the editorial page is different yeah. from what the reporting is. And nobody thinks anything about it. So I don't think anything about the fact that there can be a different tone or, or take on the editorial page of the Globe than what the reporters are, are saying. What I will say about the conflict of interest itself and how it was reported and all of that came to be is that the whole issue about the, the, uh, the casinos coming to Massachusetts is under the umbrella of conflict of interest. The legislators passed that wimpy little thing that allows them to, you know, do whatever they want to do, lobbying for it after two paltry years once they're out of the, you know, out of the state house. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, I mean, this whole thing is fraught with conflict of interest. So if the guy that's held up as, you know, the guy who's representing integrity, who's the head of it, has anything that just smells a little bit, 
you know, that has to be reported. And it should have been reported probably in a tough way. I don't, I'm not assessing it gleefully, but it, it, it needed to be tough. Yeah, Corsby yeah. has said, you know, you know that the, the Globe didn't even have its facts right, so well, we don't know about that. Actually, so it's more of a question of emphasis, yeah, I think, yeah. than... Mm. Um, uh, Crosby said to my radio colleague, Jim Browdy, on his television show that he didn't make any money from mm. this uh, deal he had years ago with the guy that partly owns the land. Now, we don't know whether... We don't know, though, whether they're, they're selling these magazines for cable TV or whatever it was may have paid off some debts or something that, that if we, we don't exactly know what but the globe, we should clarify the globe said he made a lot of money yes and Steve Crosby said, said that wasn't zero that wasn't yeah. that wasn't true I don't know what the facts are I haven't reported it myself but that's what he said to, to Browdy but I'm with you on this whole um, uh, thing of the editorial page disagreeing with the news pages I mean it's true I can't recall when the globe spotlight team has gone off and done some big crusade where the editorial yeah. pages has, has disagreed but I think it's it's good that we ha can have that because I think you want to have that sort of uh, independence where the news reporters or the columnists who are supposed to be uh, uh, you know opinionated and expressing their own opinion do not necessarily in all sorts of newspapers agree with the editorial. But this wasn't of the an ideological thing. This was it, different. This was they were almost but shedding it, doubt on their own reporting. Except it was ideological in the mm -hmm. sense of what do you think? Do you think that okay he should have disclosed earlier? I think we can all agree on that. But if he had a business relationship with someone twenty three years ago. He hasn't been involved with them since. It's not clear how much money he made. Uh, I think reasonable people can disagree about whether that is disqualifying or not, especially since he has mm. recused himself to some degree and may end up recusing himself more. I mean, you have to be totally squeaky clean, I guess. I get that because it's casinos, but you can take two sides of this. 